What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and today we have something extremely exciting, something I'm really pumped for and that's gonna be how Onslaught and Progress both beat their own records. Progress getting another brand new world record right after Onslaught re-beat their own world record and we're gonna go over exactly the strategies they use, the, the new strategies, nothing that we've covered in previous videos. We're specifically today gonna go over the new strategies, the very exciting things that they used to beat Blackwing Lair in under 20 minutes. And hopefully this is gonna be very helpful for you guys to possibly go onto the PTR and test some of these out in your own guild's runs. I know my guild just got the Horde World 6 fastest run and we could easily get three minutes off of that at least. So we're trying to get it in the world top five. And if you wanna see that, I stream it over on Twitch TV slash Sarth on Tuesdays. So next Tuesday, 7 p.m. PST. Anyways, today we're gonna to go over and break down all of the new strategies that Onslaught and Progress both employed to get sub 19 minutes, under 19 minutes even for Progress. That's unreal. It's something that we never even thought was possible, especially with private servers. So let's break this all down. If you like this sort of content, as usual, my name is Sarth. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave a comment for something you want me to cover as well. And of course, you can check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Sarth or join our Discord and see when I'm going live and ask me questions there. All right, let's do this, guys. Now, the new big strategies that we're seeing used are a little bit of things that were used before, but a lot of new things today, and we're gonna break it all down. But before we really get into it, of course, we do need to cover that Onslaught as a Horde Guild, and they have more mana issues did again use the flasks of distilled wisdom they actually used 39 flasks of distilled wisdoms almost 40 and so throughout their entire raid they're pretty much spamming these flasks so that they have infinite mana on all of their healers and they never need to stop this is an extremely extremely expensive tactic but it is completely necessary for a speed run at this caliber on the horde side the next new trick though that they do use and utilize both of these guilds use is actually the Masterwork Target Dummy, which drops a target dummy for 15 seconds. You need 275 engineering skill to do this and it pretty much just taunts all of the targets. This is used on the Worm Guards, especially if they are gonna be bronze so that you can hopefully not get any of the spinny boys. I'll cover that later because I'm gonna break down side by side for the most part how they encounter different parts of the raid. But Onslaught by themselves actually used 32 of these in their run. This is a new technique that we hadn't really used before and it is extremely, extremely useful. We did have complaints or we did see qualms with Onslaught using weak auras and mind vision compared with the Blade of Eternal Darkness to find out if their Worm guards were actually the bronze ones, which causes the tank to spin and pretty much kill everybody. Unfortunately, in my run last night, we actually had all three of the ones in Neff's room be bronze, and that caused us to lose a lot of people and lose at least a minute and a half. This is the new technique for dealing with that, and we will cover that when we get to it. Lastly, before we actually dive into these VODs and look at things side by side, um, a big shout out to Tetsu, who is the streamer that we watched in progress. I know they had some other people streaming, but Tetsu is an incredible streamer. And of course, Salve and Onslaught, we're both using both of those, so you can find their links to their Twitch and to these runs, both in the description below. All right, let's do this. Ignoring raid composition, you can see that Tetsu and pretty much every warrior is going to be using their PvP trinket on this boss. They're not using a FAP on this boss, they are saving their potion cooldowns, and they're going to use their PvP trinket in case they do get stunned. Another thing that's very important is the exposed armor rogue, and if you missed it, I did do a video breaking down everything you need to know about improved exposed armor and exposed armor rogues, and you can just check that out right up there and also in the description. You absolutely do need an exposed armor rogue. Both of these groups run hemo rogues as their exposed armor rogue. What you want to do on this boss, a big thing on Razorgore is the last time that your tank or whoever's controlling the orb drops Razorgore, you're gonna have your exposed armor rogue just target the boss and build combo points, get five combo points up so that right when Razorgore is targetable during your real kill, then you can just blow them up. 
Another thing as well, and you'll actually notice this, is that warriors need to wait to bloodthirst until he heals. Look at that. He's down to 86% health, and then he heals before any of the warriors use bloodthirst or waste any rage. Your rogues can attack because they build combo points, but warriors, it is a complete waste of rage to attack that before. Next, in Progress's run, they switch to a Speed Trinket and a Diamond Flask after this boss. In Onslaught's run, they actually utilize the Cinder Bracers from the Fire Festival event, the Midsummer Fire Festival, which gives you this little elemental mob that fights for you for 10 minutes. And it does actually hit decently hard. It can hit for about 63 to 80 damage. Expose armor up on the boss instantly. They blow him up again. So is this pretty much the same thing? It's a very easy, easy encounter. They do get a conflagrate, but whatever. And you'll see that Onslaught actually moves to just Diamond Flask for this next boss. And then everybody else that hasn't used their Cinder Elemental Guardian is also going to use it for Veil Straws on this boss. Another thing really fast to mention is that all of the melee and speed runs usually will be on the side of Veil vale that the casters are, and the casters are up top. So your casters and healers are up top. You've got some totems down here, but your totems should reach, and your melee is on this side. So right after Veil vale is when you need to use a little bit of speed. Progress uses their speed trinket, and Onslaught equips actually rocket boots. So they're going to use their rocket boots and their swiftness of Zanza pots to move up faster or as fast as possible. They're actually using swiftness potions on Onslaught's side, which is why they didn't use potions on the first boss. Now they will just blow up these Wormkins and you'll actually see all of the rogues and the hunter already moves ahead. They're not waiting at all. The suppression room is the biggest time waster in any speed run. Once these are all dead, they're just going to use their rocket boots. Salve actually gets unlucky in his breaks, but it's still fine. They're almost all the way up there and only a couple people break. Moving towards progress, you can see that their rogues are moving up ahead and they actually have one rogue that gets knocked out of stealth, but the suppression device, they actually just wait for it. This rogue gets knocked out of stealth. They call for everybody to wait and not knock him out of stealth. They kill this hatcher and then they just move forward. All of the other suppression devices are already down where they can just honestly run straight forward. And Onslaught does the same thing. They run straight forward. You can see that they are far over to the left because both groups are consciously pulling the top side. They need to get to the top of the suppression room with about one minute left on their burning adrenaline. So here is where everything will group up and you'll see that they just have to blow it all up. And this is again purposeful so they can get up here as fast as possible. But here's where the first real big brain strategy is. They skipped multiple hatchers because you only need to kill seven out of 10 of the hatchers to not count as a trash skip in the Warcraft logs. Again, you'll see this, it's a little bit lower quality on progresses on Tetsu's YouTube video, but there's a diamond up here. It's a rogue that's gonna face pull the boss, sprint away, and he's gonna run the boss all the way to them. So they're gonna fight Broodlord Lashlayer with Burning Adrenaline up. And Onslaught does the same thing. This is just a huge big brain play to fight the boss with 30 seconds up of your Burning Adrenaline. It actually ends up saving them over 30 seconds, possibly over a minute, just on the suppression room and the Broodlord fight alone. So this is the real reason, the biggest reason that they could cut down below 20 minutes. Another thing I do want to mention really fast, the rogue that's getting him, as they're sprinting away, it looks like on the logs that he is just using a lip so that the boss is no longer aggroed on him and aggroes towards everyone else. He doesn't need to actually go up and physically attack the boss. This next room is kind of where they first start to differ a little bit. They get their technician pulls right here, and Onslaught goes in and does a double tech pack. Progress tends to usually do singular tech pulls almost the entire time. And so I'll switch over to Onslaught's run pretty much in a second. But you need your hunter to instantly go and attack the overseers or the worm guards. The reason for this is because you don't want to waste any time. So while you're killing the goblin packs, whichever size of them you decide to kill, you do want the worm guards moving towards you pretty much right away. Ideally, you can fight Fire Maw with these Overseers still alive. And both groups actually do this. They fight Fire Maw with the Overseers still alive. 
A key thing here is that for Onslaught, they actually use Recklessness on Fire Maw with the Overseers alive. You have to focus down and burn the Worm Guard, and that is because if he's bronze, he can start you to spin your tank to spin, and you'll kill everybody. Also, he does cleave, so like the most important thing you need to do on that pull is burn down that Worm Guard, and then you can fight the Overseers with Fire Maw. It's not an issue at all. This is just an easy pull. Like, you're not even worried. You're cleaving them down and you're killing Fire Maw. Onslaught, again, does use Recklessness on this, and Progress actually used their Recklessness on Veil, which is an interesting choice because Progress did have the faster run, but Fire Maw, especially with Overseers up, does seem like a better usage of Recklessness, but Progress, again, did get the faster run. Moving back to Onslaught's run, you can see as well, this group does run on the left side of the top room. Then they actually wait for their puller to get the aggro of two tech packs here. So Onslaught always does more tech packs than the Alliance Guild and Progress. A big thing for this is they actually have shamans that can use Grounding Totem, which is huge for stopping the Warlocks just shadow bolting everyone because you can just use your grenades to blow up the techs themselves but it's the Shadow Bolts from the Warlocks that can get scary on bigger pulls like this. Next, they all use Faps again and focus down the Worm Guards. This is pretty much the same strategy as Progress, but they did kill two tech packs there instead of just the one. They pull Fire Maw as the Worm Guard is about to die. This was good padding for both groups. And again, they just kill the Overseers with Fire Maw. This is where Onslaught uses Recklessness, as you can see. Onslaught pops pretty much all of their cooldowns to kill Fire Maw as fast as possible, and some of their warriors have Fire Res gear on because they might have anticipated slightly longer uh, Fire Maw kills. But even with, this was very smooth. They already have, as you can look up here in the top corner, their puller moving forward for the craziest pull of the entire dungeon. And that is Onslaught's triple tech pack. This is terrifying and I can't believe they pulled this off cleanly. Their puller uses Flask of Petrification. Everybody waits for everything to group up and then they're gonna nade blow up literally everything all at once, except for all of the actual Warlocks and Overseers. But all of the techies go down pretty much instantly. Now the scary part is the Warlocks. This is the most intimidating pull and very risky pull, but their healers pulled it off with full healing. And this is probably a pull that if I were to go back into the logs, their healers probably all used multiple flasks of distilled wisdom just on this pull alone because people are getting so low and heals has to pump out as much as possible. They did use some of their masterwork target dummies to pull some of the aggro off of themselves, but not that many of them because they're going to need them for the next few pulls or the just the next pull really. But again, this is only really doable or the reason they could pull this off is because Horde have shamans and grounding totems can just be spammed and cycled around so that they don't actually get hit by as many shadow bolts. This is something new that we haven't really seen in any of the speedruns before, and apparently Progress has pulled it off as well, but they chose not to do it because it is riskier, and they don't know if it's really saving them the time. Now, this pull is where those Masterwork target dummies come into play. The reason you use these target dummies is basically they just auto-taunt everything around them or auto-taunt a target around them, and then the Overseers here will turn to them and attack them. It won't one-shot them, and if you have enough of these target dummies, you can kill the Overseers pretty much before they even start attacking your actual tanks. This is huge, mainly because if you are stacking these, which you want to do to cleave them down, if one of your tanks turns out to be a bronze Overseer and starts spinning, you can kill the entire raid or get everyone very low, and you need to move away as fast as possible. But the target dummies can't spin. So this was like a massive big brain play, and I think every guild should be utilizing this if they're trying to do a speed run. This was just awesome. So just watch, look as everybody starts spawning these target dummies, and then look at the target of the worm guards. Back onto a target dummy, back onto a target dummy, again on a target dummy, it's at half health, and you're still seeing people cycle target dummies, and now it's on the tanks, and so they're pretty much fine. Another target dummy, 
Onslaught then moves on to do the double drakes, but they actually make a mistake and not really a mistake. They have their taunts get resisted on the double drakes, which is unfortunate because then the drakes actually split up. Ebon Rock does a little bit of healing, but the drakes actually split up. Everybody uses their cinder bracers again because you have three charges of that for a little bit extra damage and they do as much cleaving as possible. I'll show you what happens here. Progress decides to do the singular drakes and the singular drakes is a bit of a safer play. So you're gonna see in a few seconds, the taunt resists happen on Ebon Rock, and so people are gonna get wing buffeted. Wing buffeted all the way over here, wing buffeted all the way over here. Both of the drakes are fully split up here. The entire raid almost gets shadow flamed. A lot of the raid does get shadow flamed. So this is extremely sketchy. On a speed run like this, like if your raid is not using their cloaks, it is a huge mistake. If you're doing singular drakes, it's not terrible and it's not extremely terrifying, but it's still sketchy. But look at how much time they didn't save by just killing one because Flame Gore was already at 60% health. It was a little bit unfortunate. They definitely lost out on a good amount of time on that right there. They already had their puller for the worm guards run off. And so they have the person that's gonna use Flask of Petrification already pull the worm guards and their group is moving. For progress or for onslaught, they have the worm guards pulled to this corner right here outside of Chromagus's room. And if we go to progress, they do the same thing with the target dummies that Onslaught did, so everybody's using these Masterwork target dummies, which is amazing again. But if we move forward past their singular drakes that they do, they actually already, during Flame Gore, right as they started Flame Gore, the person that was pulling the Worm Guards went in and pulled the Worm Guards. He moved inside of Chromagus' room with the Worm Guards, which is easier if you are an alliance because Paladins can just, you can give them a soul stone and they can run all the way to this inside corner. Look at this, moving into that inside corner and then they're gonna use their Flask of Petrification. Technically, I guess you could lip and have a rogue sprint and lip and do the same thing. But the fear is if anyone, if anyone gets close enough to the Worm Guards, even to get like healing aggro or anything like that, then the lip is just gonna make sure that they, the Worm Guards come and attack you. It's kind of the same thing with Bubble, but it was a huge play. And so now they have their actual Paladin back in here. They use the healer, which is an advantage for Alliance over Horde. They have their Paladin back in already, which is great. Uh, he just gets the Soul Stone and be back in the fight. And then they only get one breath on Chromagus, which is awesome as well. But for Onslaught, the person that did the pull for the Wormkins over there is just dead. He's not going to be in the fight for Neff. So they are missing one person for the fight for Neff. And so this is both of them coming towards the end. Onslaught is entering Neff's room at 15 minutes and 36 seconds. And Progress is entering the room at 15 minutes and 8 seconds. So they're very, very close here. And Progress actually does have a DC, a Paladin DC'd. So they're going to lose Blessing of Might in the middle of this fight because the DC was for so long. So they are on world record pace. Both of them were on world record pace at the time, but progress is, as you can see, about 30 seconds, a little under ahead. Here again, you're gonna see masterwork target dummies. And this is something my guild, we forgot to do, is use a bunch of masterwork target dummies on this worm guard pack. And this cost us over a minute and a half. We lost like half the raid. Still got Horde World 6, but this is really, it guys past this the fight is very simple they kill the worm guards and then they just have to kill neff in a normal time and that's the same thing for progress they run into the room they're not going to get rems back up so they're both at 39 people progress is at 39 people because of a dc and onslaught is at 39 people because of that death from pulling the worm guards. You can see as Rems is still dead here so that he could get loot off of Neff. There's not enough time for you to run back, like run back as a ghost and then get summoned or anything like that. And there you have it guys. Those are the brand new strategies that both of these guilds, these top, top guilds, and you're gonna see 
all of the top guilds pushing for with these new strategies. These were huge, huge big brain plays, especially the Broodlord pull and the Masterwork target dummies. These were pretty nutty. Congratulations to both of these guilds for getting sub 20 minute runs, Onslaught beating their world record to set the new world record and then progress the next day for coming out on top. Both of these guilds are absolutely insane. As usual, you do need an incredible amount of preparation to get this all done and they did practice this a crazy amount of times. My guild even did some practice runs. So if you like this guys, if there's anything I missed, really just make sure to let me know in the comments as well of course make sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel if you like this sort of content i'll be covering a lot of the same things for aq and moving forward and i do a lot of rogue content as well come join the discord and if you have any questions or want to hang out with me follow me on twitch tv slash sarth i stream every monday tuesday Friday and Saturday, 7 p.m. PST, except for Saturday, 4 p.m. PST. Thank you guys for all tuning in. Maybe these records both could be broken next week if they do slightly better, but they're not going to have the 3% crit buff from the Fire Festival. So we're going to see if either of these records holds out next week. I'll catch you guys all on the next one. And again, shout out to Tetsu and Sal Dali for streaming these and their incredible runs. And then also Jube actually helped me figure out how they were perfectly pulling the Broodlord packs. Peace out guys, and I'll catch you all on the next one.